Chile is undergoing a historic constitutional rewrite as a result of the main demands from a social revolt that upturned the country in 2019. However, despite this being a very national issue, the delegates discussing the articles are in fact not just altering the pathway for Chile's future, but perhaps the rest of the world. A member of the Committee on Environment, Rights of Nature, Natural Commons, and the economic model of the Constitutional Convention asserted on the plenary floor that the mining sector should be led by the state, guided by social, democratic, and ecological criteria, and extraction should be prohibited in protected natural areas. The idea stood out, particularly because mining in Chile is the largest export. The country is the second largest exporter of lithium, which is heavily and increasingly tied to the process of the separation from fossil fuel intensive energy and transport systems through renewable energy and electric vehicles. Unfortunately, this extractive process of mining is harming rather than further helping the environment as well as local communities. Although most global economic systems are dominated by the quote-unquote global north, especially regarding energy systems, the geopolitics of the green transition is increasingly about including the aspirations of the less economically influential, yet equally human, global south. The president of Chile, Gabriel Boric, said that, We don't want projects that destroy our country and communities. Chile cannot again make the historic mistake of privatizing resources and must instead ensure the state is involved in the lithium sector in a manner that furthers economic development while including local communities as protagonists. These objectives speak to the inequities that already exist in the transition to renewable energy. Lithium is already a non-renewable resource in high demand and will only increase in value as batteries become a pivotal role in decarbonizing transport which already accounts for around 20% of CO2 emissions globally. Unfortunately for the green revolution, the process of removing the element from the earth is anything but eco-friendly. The majority of proven lithium reserves lie within what is known as the Lithium Triangle on the Andean Plateau, which spans Chile, Argentina, and Bolivia in an area of the world often characterized by the expansive salt flats that play a vital role in maintaining vulnerable desert ecosystems. The Atacama Desert in Chile has extremely high levels of solar radiation, hot days, and cold nights. These are favorable conditions for mining water as the process of extracting lithium is known. Massive amounts of thick, lithium-rich brine are recovered and stored in evaporation ponds to then shift the solid matter to be processed further along in the supply chain. The salt flats are also a migratory bird staging area and home to three species of South American flamingos. Lithium mining, combined with climate change, has resulted in a decline in flamingo populations. The reason these birds are especially important is that they serve as a biological indicator of the health of an ecosystem because of the landscape scale at which they interact with the wetlands, and so the declining population poses a dire sign for the health of the whole area. Mining firms also pose a threat to communally maintained irrigation systems for the 18 Atacameo indigenous settlements that surround the Atacama Salt Flat. Lithium firms require about 50 times the amount of water that regular households do. The Chilean Water Authority pronounced the watershed of the area had been exhausted in recent years, which led to the prohibition of the issuance of additional water rights on the salt flats for extractive reasons. However, because this does not apply retrospectively, the environmental damage continues. Furthermore, there is a global interest in preserving these desert wetlands. According to experts, microbes in the desert have evolved into their environment, which can provide vital astrobiological clues to the evolution of life on Earth. Meanwhile, the Atacama Desert's resilient plants provide insight into preserving biodiversity and agriculture in a warming world. In order to better manage this extraction in the Atacama, President Boric has promised to establish a governmental lithium business. Potential investors have voiced concern about the hazards of greater government participation in the sector. However, state-owned firms are ubiquitous in the extractive industries around the world. Indeed, under a previous neoliberal administration, Codelco, Chile's state-owned copper company, was one of the few that was not privatized. 
Officials from the Chilean government have stated that their goal is to enhance Chile's involvement in the global supply chain by cooperating with private companies and rising up the value-added ladder from lithium exporter to green technology innovation hub. Chile's mining industry accounts for more than 60% of the country's exports, and this could well increase as the demand for lithium increases. However, this means that the ideals of government involvement and environmental conservation may be at odds. Despite this, environmental activists in Chile believe that stronger government participation in the mining sector is still necessary to limit the economic and political dominance of multinational corporations. Similarly, government actors claim that a more assertive role for the state will strengthen environmental legislation. In May 2022, many of the constitutional proposals were accepted. These articles strengthen the state's role in mining sector ownership and value-added development, recognizing the finite character of mineral resources and the obligation of environmental and social protection, as well as intergenerational interests, acknowledge water as essential to life, prioritizing the human right to water as well as its role in ecosystems, and establish new rights to a healthy environment and access to environmental justice. While the convention ultimately didn't approve articles to fully nationalize the mining sector or exclude mining from all wetlands, the draft text requires mining companies to repair environmental harm, bans mining in glaciers and protected areas, and empowers the state to declare water-vulnerable areas off-limits. These sit alongside earlier victories for the eco-constituents, the recognition of the rights of nature and the declaration of a climate and an environmental emergency. The draft constitution will be submitted to a national referendum in September, providing voters with what has been described as a stark choice between conservative nostalgia for the past and hope for a future of dignity for all. This issue is, of course, not limited only to extractive industries, but instead echoes through supply chains. These supply chains aren't just grounds for capital flow, but also sites to protest over environmental rights. The battle for the environment here in Chile should hopefully inspire further reckoning about the impact of extractive activities worldwide and bring up questions about our global capitalist system like, how may a supply chain fairness principle be applied to the production of green technologies? And what would it take to turn the world's social and economic inequities upside down on the path to a renewable energy future? These are inherently political issues that will be debated in the next few years globally. And Chile's vibrant democratic experiment is at the vanguard of this fight.